All's fair in love or war. Or is it? Sharon Horn from here. I had Valentine's and my little uh, patriotic bear. He's really a 4th of July pair, but politics, kind of like war lately, so I thought that they would be appropriate to start off this video. Now, it turns out this idiom is attributed to the poet John Lyley, and it's been around for a long, long time. Of course, love and war have been around for a long, long time. Turns out I actually covered this idiom on December 5th, and I realized I doubt that my feelings and my thoughts about this particular expression have changed much since then, but I thought I'd go ahead and do a new video anyway. I'll share in the comments below a link to the past video, and you can see for yourself if my if my thoughts and my ideas have changed on this or not. Uh, so all's fair in love or war, what does it mean? It basically means that <clears throat> anything goes in the area of love and war. So you can behave in ways that you would never behave normally if it's due to the root cause of love or the root cause of war. If you're in a war, anything goes. There's really no advantage to you if your enemies and you're in a battle are are no holds barred, anything goes, and you try to be, you know, fair and humane, chances are you're gonna get creamed because they don't they don't respect. You're not playing off the same set of rules. Now I've never been in a war, so I can't speak to it, but I think that I, I better not even go there. But love, I have been in love. I have been on both sides of <clears throat> love and love triangles and the whole mess. And what happens is in love, what we as human beings look for reasons for why we behave the way we do, why we feel the way we do. And we try to justify our behavior and our emotions with rational thinking. And to me, this idiom, this expression, all's fair in love and war, is one big excuse, and it's really a lie, to give ourselves permission to behave in ways during certain situations when we normally wouldn't behave that way throughout the rest of our life, saying that all's fair. No matter what I have to do to get this person to love me, lie, cheat, steal, manipulate, uh, make up stories, embellish, whatever. I'm in love. It's true love. Therefore, anything goes. It doesn't matter who I hurt on my climb to achieve my goal or objective. All's fair. Because this has to do with love. I think that's why we see so many war analogies with respect to our business and even our politics in the world. Because countries and business owners and competitors use it as a justification for bad behavior, unethical behavior, immoral behavior, fraudulent behavior, lying, cheating, stealing, embezzling, spying, torture, all of the gamut of things that you would never even consider, but then they add the label and the excuse because it's an excuse. Well, I'm in love, so nothing else matters. This is war, so nothing else matters. Well, you can do that. We're all free to do and choose and behave any way we want, but at the end of the day, at, at the end of the game, we all have to live with ourselves. We all have to, to be responsible for our behavior, whether we break the rules or not. Now, I'm a pretty professed rule breaker when it comes to business rules and industry norms and the way we've always done it. One of my most dreaded lines in, in corporate America that I would ever hear was, well, that's just the way we've always done it. And it would just, it literally would make me cringe because I'm like, oh my gosh, just because you've always done something one way doesn't mean that's the only way to do it. Just because you've had to claw and scratch to get to where you are now, it doesn't mean that's the way you have to always do it. So I, I, love, I love and hate this person, personally, this idiom, this expression, because I don't believe personally that all is fair in love and war. I, I don't, fair is such a, oh, fair is such a tough word because it's so subjective, just like every other word, right? Love is subjective, war is subjective. Uh, if we can apply war terms and war games to our businesses and what we do for a living in our jobs, uh, is, it, is it really war or is it just something we're calling war to justify our bad behavior? Usually, whenever this idiom comes up, it's because somebody is using it as a way of justifying doing something that they already know is wrong. Either 
immoral, unethical, or just plain evil, right? And sometimes we've seen it so much in the last year, all is fair in love and war. And we're, we're you know, the war on drugs, the war on COVID pandemic. This is a war. We, you know, we have to do all these things because we have to fight against this pandemic. And is that true? Is that really true? Yeah, I don't even think any of us know anymore. There's been so much misinformation about COVID and politics and war and love. But it's up for each of us to think for ourselves and decide. So a couple thoughts on uh, all is fair in love and war. I would love to know, do you personally believe, because millions of people do, that all is absolutely fair in love and war? And some people, part of why I grabbed my little patriotic guy, is some people believe that politics is war and it's no holds barred. Anything you want any, to do, the ends justifies the means. Uh, any Anything goes if you want to win or get what you want. I personally don't believe that with respect to politics, business, life, love, or freaking anything. Being a good human being isn't something that you are one day and then not the next. If you are true to yourself and living in alignment with who you really are, you behave in ways that make you feel good all the time and make the world a better place all the time. You don't say, oh, I want this person in my life so I'm gonna do whatever it takes or I want to beat this competitor or this person that's, that's creating similar things in the world that I am. I have to squash and destroy them no matter what. It's a, the ultimate example of lack and scarcity in an abundant universe. And why do we feel lack and scarcity? Why do we feel like we have to be at war or compete? Because we think that there's only this big a pie and that if we want a bigger piece of it, we have to steal it and take it away from someone else. Is that true? No, it's a lie. I think that we all have been told and we tell ourselves repeatedly to justify doing what we want whenever we want. And that, I don't know, I just shake my head sometimes and I think yep I want things too but I never want to achieve my goals and objectives by destroying or harming or hurting other people and that's how I build my businesses and have built my businesses in the past as well I think there's plenty of room in the world for all of us to be and do and have whatever it is we want and create the kind of life that we want to live and that doesn't mean somebody else can't have a great life it's kind of like bullying I, I don't understand it at all. I don't get it. I can't understand why somebody would want to just be mean to someone else for the fun of it or to build themselves up. It doesn't make any sense to me. You don't need to hurt other people to get what you want. I remember in corporate America, you know, the old corporate days, there was always one or two people that were the fierce competitors that were always trying to destroy and squash anybody else in the organization to climb the corporate ladder and to get their way to the top because they believed well there's only one CEO spot there's only you know so many vice presidents there's only so many president spots so I need to backstab and cheat and lie and manipulate and take credit for other people's work or do whatever it takes to get that spot get that promotion and the truth is it, it it doesn't matter. There's always another opportunity for each and every one of us that is more for us. It's more in alignment with who we are. It feels better to us than ever having to compromise on our core values and what we believe to be good and right and true. So I'd love people to, to chime in on this. Again, I'll share in the comments below my last video. I'm sure I was much more eloquent on that one. Uh, but I'm just thinking more of when we're building a business, when we're supersizing our business, when we're growing something, the order for there to be no competition is for us to just be ourselves and realize that the, the universe is an extremely abundant place and there's plenty of room for us to create whatever it is we want. And creating what we want is a much better way to build the business that we love and to create the life we want than destroying some one else's business or someone else's life or thinking that we have to seal part of someone's pie. I think it's kind of like the different approach you go into negotiations with. If you go into a negotiation with a win-win mindset, both parties can come out winning and feeling like the process worked well. If you go into a negotiation or a mediation with a I have to win and destroy the other person mindset, 
usually those negotiations and those mediations fail and nobody gets what they want. So that's just some of my thoughts on all is fair in love and war today. Love to know what you think of this this particular idiom and expression, what experiences you've had with it. Like I said, I've had experiences in business with it. I've had experiences in, in romantic and other friendship relationships with it. And whenever somebody subjects themselves to the all's fair in love and war belief and excuse, I think it's a belief and excuse, that's my opinion, of course, uh, whenever they ascribe to that, somebody's gonna lose and there isn't gonna be a whole lot of good feelings. And the truth is, when you lie and cheat and pretend you're something you're not in any area or aspect of your life, you get found out eventually. The person that you tried to manipulate into loving you ends up finding out the truth. The business that you tried to destroy, and you might successfully destroy another person's business, a competitor. But guess what? That creates a void in the market, and somebody maybe smarter and wiser and better at serving customers might pop into that space that that void that was created by your destroying the competition so i guess be careful what you wish for is one of my favorite expressions all right have an amazing day i'll be with you tomorrow with another interesting idiom what does it mean where does it come from and how might you use it in your life and your business right now i say be true to yourself and you never have to worry about the competition all right have a great day